All right, so we've got a note-taking app. We can enter notes in, and it will display all the notes um, below here in reverse chronological order. So that's good. Um, but now, you know, the problem is all our data, if we close this app and reopen it, the data is going to be gone. And, and the reason is we're storing our data only in a variable. And variables are, are kind of like the short-term memory of the app. Okay, they're not persistent. The data goes away when the app closes. So everything the user enters, it's great, but if they close the app, it's it's gone. So what we need is persistent data, database data, and App Inventor provides some pretty pretty simple ways to to do that. Um, so I'm going to go back over to the component designer, and I need one more component. It's called the Tiny DB component, and this is you know it represents the phone's database. Actually, each app on your phone has a database file that you can store data in persistently and whatever you put in there it's going to be there even if you close the app okay so I'm gonna I've got this tiny DB component now and every time the user submits something I really kinda wanna update what's in my database and what I wanna do is is basically put my list in the database okay my list is called note list and that's what I'm going to store. That's my value to store in the database. So I've got this variable. What I'm saying is, you know what, I want to stick this variable into the persistent storage, into the database, so it'll be there even if I close the app. Okay. I also have to supply a name to the database item. I'm going to name this guy notes. My variable is called note list. I could have said note list here, but you know, notice this is a text block and this is like a tag, a name in the database. So think of the database as you know tagged values. In this case the, the tag for my note list is called notes and later when I go get the data I'll use this tag to actually retrieve it. So right now if I ran my app it would store after I entered each item it would store the whole list in the database and keep it, keep it updated. Okay, the next thing I need to do is well, I need to go get that data and what I want to do is when the app opens, you know, because because my whole issue is when they close the app and reopen it, I want to keep, you know, still have my data. What I need to do is when the app opens, which that's what the screen dot initialize block is for, I want to go grab stuff from the database and stick it into this variable. So screen dot initialize is a block, and you know, not just for this app, but it's a block for when the app opens. Okay, this is triggered. Okay, so screen dot initialize is a very important block you'll use a lot. Okay, and really what we want to do is use this get value block of tiny b. So we stored value, you know, we stuck things in the database with store value. Get value is going to do the opposite, and it's going to get something from the database and bring it into the app. And actually, what we want to do is stick it in our variable called note list. Okay, that's great. So let's there's note list, get value, and we need to tell it which value. In this case, there's only one value, but we need to tell the tag or the name of the data in the database, and it's going to be called notes. Okay, so you would think this might work. It's close, but you know, just looking at it right now, go get the data from the database. It's going to be a list of notes the user has entered. Stick it into our variable, uh, and then then we're fine. Okay. There's a couple problems. One is the first time the app is opened, before any data has been entered, we've got a problem because we're going to go ask for some data and there's nothing there. And what the database does is return empty text. And then we'll change this variable so its value is empty text. And that variable has always got to be a list. Its type has to be a list. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to check this and we need to use an if statement and I need to I want to copy this block I want to see if what I get back from the database is indeed a list and there's this nice block called is a list and the thing we want to check is what we got back from the database so if what we got back from the database is a list then let's go ahead and set our variable to that value Okay, if we ask this and what we get back is the empty text, so it's the first time the app's been opened, we're not going to do anything. 
Okay, so right now the app is opened. We check to see if there's data there. If there is, we initialize our note list. Okay, we're getting there. We're close. Right now we store the data when new data is submitted, but when the app is opened, we go grab that data, bring it into our app. But remember, note list is a variable. And it's, you know, it's our internal memory. It's kind of hidden from the user unless we stick it into a label. And, I don't know, you know, in previous um, videos, I showed you, you know, how we, you know, we kind of stuck things into our label once we got new notes that were entered by the user. So we kind of want to do something like that. And to do it, we're going to use a control block, and it's called a for each. And what we want to do is, when the app opens, there may be a whole list of items. We want to actually show all those items. We don't want to display all of them. Okay? When you do a for each, there's always this parameter. I'm going to rename it item. And we want to basically go through each item in the variable called note list. Okay? and I'm going to stick that right in there. So we're going to go get the data from the database and then we're going to display the data. Okay, right now we're not displaying anything, but whatever blocks we put in here, they're going to be processed on every item of the of the list. Okay, and what we want to do to every item is stick it in our label. Okay, so I'm going to go grab the note list label and I want to you know what I'm going to do is change its text every time. Okay, And what I want to do is change that text to what's there. Okay, So I'm going to first have to grab a make text block. Okay, Now remember with for each we're going to continue to go through this a bunch of times. So the first time this note text. Sorry, I, got, I grabbed the wrong block. The first time through the note list label, its text is blank. It's nothing. That's only the first time for the first item. So at that point what we want to do is stick in the item. Okay, so this is one of the notes that the users entered that we stored in our note list. And, at, and remember that item, when we added it, items we added items which had both the note and the date so that's that's both of these things right okay that's great so there's the item and then after every item we want to grab or put in a couple new line characters okay so the first item gets put in two new line characters go back up get the next item and add that item to the back end, actually to the bottom, right? Because we know that first item in our list, because of the way we entered them, the first item is the newest item, the, the latest entered. Okay, great. I think we're there. We're getting the data from the database, we stick it into our variable, then we loop through our list variable and put every item into our label. So we display, this, this code right here is for displaying the list. Okay, I would love to test it with live testing, but let me warn you, you cannot test persistence. You can't test database stuff with live testing. You actually have to you have to get the app onto the phone or the emulator and run the app, close it, rerun it. Live testing, you can't test it. If you do, the database data will never appear. It always basically cleans out the, the database. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our developer screen and I'm going to download to connected phone. Okay, this should really should, should say connected device. In this case, we're connected to the emulator. So I'm going to download my app to the emulator and this is running the live testing, so let me close the live testing. And what you'll see, and this will take 20 or 30 seconds, is our app we just built um, you know, we've been doing live testing, which, you know, that what that is, is the App Inventor tool kind of communicating as you develop, so you can kind of get a, a view of how the app's going to work.
but really to test it, you actually need to get the app on the phone and or on the emulator. Okay, and once it's there, um, you'll get a little screen that comes up and says it's done. Once it's there, then you can really test the app. And in fact, for persistence, it's the only way to test it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to run the app. We're going to enter some data. Should work as it was working. The key, though, is will be if we close the app and reopen it, our data should still be there. Okay. So, okay, the application has downloaded to the phone. That's great. Click OK, and here's the note taker app. It appears, and if I double click on it to run it. Um, Here's our familiar app that we've seen a couple times. Uh, there's no data there, so I'm going to enter. Uh, let's just enter note one for the first note, and note two for the second note. Let me make sure I get rid of that stuff. So yeah, okay, things are working fine. I've got my two notes. Okay, so now the real test is if I close the app and reopen it, will these notes still be there? Okay, if I hit this back arrow, that is to close the app. If I hit home, the app is still really running, okay? But if you hit back in Android, it means close the app. So I hit the back, and the app is now closed. Okay, so now if my blocks are working correctly, they should go to the database and not only bring the data back into the variable, but display it. And then things should work fine from there. So I click on my note taker. And good, there's my two notes. Um, but let's see, are they in the right order? I think actually they're not in the right order. Okay, so let's let's think about why that's true. Um, let's look at our blocks. When we add new items, we did reverse the order on how we displayed things. But you'll notice we did we we always add the items to the end. Okay, so um, our order is note one in in the variable is note one and then note two, even though we'll show note two first when we display it when a new one is entered. Okay, so what we need to do is when we bring these guys in, we want to make the last guy show up at the at the at the top. Right, so right now we're bringing in a new guy and putting it in after what we'd already brought in. Okay, so note two would come in after note one. So we kind of need to flip this order now. And I'm going to switch these guys around. And what I want to do is, as I'm looping through here, put that last item I just looked at and then a couple new lines and then what was already shown there. Okay, so now I think we should get the right order, which is you know, note two, the last one I put in should be should be put in first. And this is just running the live testing, so we don't need so back to the app we we're running. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this app and let's let's test this now. So I think now um, it will show them in reverse chronological order. So I'm going to go back to the package for phone and say download to connected phone. And we should see that thing come up here in a, in a second. Um, and I'll pause this. It should, should take about 30, 30 seconds. All right, so I, I kind of paused and then resumed the video. And anyway, the app successfully downloaded. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to run. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to we do not want to connect to the device. Uh, well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to rerun our note taker. This should be the new version of note taker. And it should bring in our data correctly this time. Yeah, good. So notice note two, which is the second one, five seconds after the first note, appears first. And that's because I reversed how I was, as I was looping through each item of the note list, I reversed the way that I stuck the items in. I stuck kind of the last items in after what was already shown in the display.